It's exciting. I mean, all of it is about sharing visions. And so it all starts with drawing, you know, and, uh, well, really starts with altering your consciousness so that you have a vision in some sense. And so from, because con consciousness is the ultimate medium. What you're trying to do as an artist is to have an experience that is worth sharing and then download it into another person's consciousness. You know, and if it were just mind to mind, uh, that would be a wonderful thing, but you have to get it out of your head and into a medium so that it can be shared and the most frictionless transmission of these dynamic visions is often through computer animation. I still love painting and I still think that painting uh, can arrest the consciousness uh, and even though it's a poor medium compared to the multi-dimensionality of our consciousness, it, um, we're surrounded by a lot of media and I often think that painting can be like the still small voice of conscience um, that an artist, a lone artist, can um, work on. And uh, amidst a, a kind of a plethora of shrill, the shrillness of media, which is mostly dominated by corporate advertising, in art, you really have to question uh, the motives of the artist and who, um, you know, what are they selling? You know, what are you, uh, we're, we're suspicious of all the visual media, you know, because most of the time we know that it's just corporations trying to sell us stuff. So we have a kind of barrier, defenses, you know. And uh, even in the art world, you know, there's, uh, it's a lot about sales and uh, egos and things like that. And, and so, you know, I, I try and look back 500 years or even a thousand years and stuff in the history of art. And, you know, for most cultures, uh, art was a sacred thing. It was about uh, translating the mythology and the uh, sense of the sacred that people had, that, that highest quintessential what is uniquely human and what is the most beautiful and what's the most true and good about life, translating that into uh, architecture or icons and various things like that. And so art was a sacred thing. And I still feel that that can be true. And my experience with psychedelics completely turned my world around. I, you know, I was pretty much of an atheist or agnostic at least. And it wasn't until I had an experience of God that I started to feel like, well, art should be your gift to God because your life is a gift from God. And so I started looking back at all the sacred art traditions, looking at the Buddhist art, and uh, there's a lot of influences in the Tibetan Buddhist uh, imagery, and a lot of psychedelic reference points even with uh, Tibetan Buddhist Tonka art. But the iconography of uh, the uh, Russian Orthodox and um, Greek Orthodox churches, there's, there's a relationship that people can have to art uh, that puts them in contact with the spirits that they're depicting in the works of art. And in the case of psychedelic art, um, that means uh, the artist has to have an experience, preferably a higher mystical experience, and then they can download that into their artwork if they have, you know, a certain skill set. And then you can take the viewer uh, get them in touch with those dimensions of awareness. Um, it's basically the same kind of idea as the sacred art of old. It's just uh, more idiosyncratic, it's more uh, 
outside of the framework of any religious uh, structure. It's more like a direct mystical experience. And uh, so that's what I think my job is, is to try and create the uh, a direct transmission of the mystic state as as closely as possible and I think that DMT is one of the great tools for accessing the divine in the proper set and setting and uh, it's it's really been very helpful for me.